Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Red Runner Sports, and today we're taking a look at the brand new Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 40, comparing it to last year's version, the 39, to see what changed. Let's run with it. Before we get started, I do want to say that these shoes were provided to me by Red Runner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video, and the style synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. The Pegasus 40 is Nike's premier flagship workhorse neutral daily trainer. It is designed to handle a wide variety of runs, does a little bit of everything, and I will say the Pegasus is probably one of Nike's most famous running shoes here, as it's been around for forever, and it makes sense because we're on the 40th edition. Now, Nike does something a little bit interesting when it comes to their running shoes. They operate on a two-year refresh basis, which means the Pegasus 39 was a complete redesign which in turn means the Pegasus 40 is just going to be a small tweak and the 41 next year's Pegasus will be another redesign. So essentially we are getting a small upper update to the Pegasus 39 and the midsole remains exactly the same because like I said before, Nike operates on that two year refresh basis. The 39 last year completely redesigned and then this year is just a few small tweaks to the upper that we'll get into here. And because this is a minor update, the stats are roughly the same. The Pegasus 40 costs $130, has that same 33 millimeters in the heel, 22 in the forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. However, the weight did go up roughly 7%, and Nike's a little bit tricky when it comes to finding the weights and stats of their shoes, but to the best of my ability, it appears the new Pegasus 40 comes in at 10.1 ounces, which again is about a 7% increase over last year, so we do gain a little bit of weight. Moving on to the upper, this is where all the changes took place and they are rather minor. Like we talked about before, the midsole remains exactly the same. Both the 39 and the 40 have two layers to the upper. They both have a thin internal engineered mesh liner. And then that outer layer, the layer you can see here is where things start to get interesting. On the 40, it's a much more open experience. The holes are much larger. You can practically see directly into the shoe. And if I had to say which shoe is more breathable, I think the 40 wins that battle. Although I think the 39 is quite breathable as well. It's more a slight edge here to the Pegasus 40. Now my issue when you have an outer layer of mesh that is this open, uh, you can potentially get some rocks, sticks, and potentially get it snagged. Where on the 39, it was much more closed knit kind of experience um, that didn't let debris get in. So if you want additional breathability, I think the 40 has a slight edge, but I think the 39 does a slightly better job of keeping debris out, especially in the toe box. As far as the fit goes, it is true size, although in classic Nike fashion, it is a rather narrow fit, and I do wish the toe box was a bit wider. But other than that, I did find it to be quite comfortable, no hot spots, blisters, or anything like that, and lockdown was quite superb. The tongue is very similar to last year. It's fully gusseted. It connects into that internal engineered mesh liner. However, this year, the tongue just has a bit more padding to it. It's ever so slightly more plush compared to the 39, and they added this small piece of fabric towards the top of the tongue to help keep the laces secure. Didn't make a massive difference for me. I think it looks kind of cool. We have some interesting branding towards the top, but otherwise, very, very similar compared to last year. Again, just with a very small bit more padding to the tongue itself. However, the biggest change to the upper comes to the midfoot. Last year on the 39, they used flywire cables, which are these tiny bits of green string that go across the midfoot. So when you lace up your shoe, the laces interact with the flywire cables, pull across your midfoot and give you a secure lockdown. They have changed that now here on the Pegasus 40. Essentially, Nike decided to ditch the flywire cables and opted for a midfoot strap, which you can see it's the red fabric here that folds across the top of the upper and then kind of goes down the side of the shoe on both the lateral and medial side. You just basically get an extra piece of fabric on both sides of the shoe to contain your foot instead of these small pieces of rope. Some people don't like fly wire because if you really do have to pull the laces tight, you can kind of feel, feel them. Didn't have that issue at all. I quite like fly wire. It's rather light, does a good job keeping your foot in place. And for whatever reason, Nike decided to change it to these kind of these straps, which just again, pieces of fabric on both sides. In my opinion, when using these two shoes, I think the straps offer a slightly more snug experience, it's just a bit more consistent, but I really don't think it's a meaningful change. Yes, you can kind of notice them, but you really have to point them out or tell someone that these straps are here instead of flywire cables, because again, it's just a very small change, and I don't think it really impacts the performance one way or the other. As far as the midsole goes, like I mentioned before, it's the exact same, so we'll take the 39, move it off to the side, and just focus on the 40. And if you're not familiar with this particular midsole setup, there is more to it than meets the eye. We have two air zoom units, one in the heel 
and one in the forefoot with the carrier foam being react which is nike's staple running shoe foam they use it on a lot of different things it's not as soft and bouncy as something like zoomax but it's a bit more stable and a bit more durable which is why they use it on their daily trainers like the pegasus and just like last year, most of the cushioning has really felt towards the back part of the shoe. I think the Air Zoom Unit and the React Foam do a good job of working together to give you a very nice ride and some energy return as well. However, that changes once you get towards the front of the shoe. It's rather thin, and in my experience, I just felt kind of firm, especially because I didn't notice the Air Zoom Unit up there at all. I kind of hope they change that, maybe ball things up or just increase the pressure or size of that Air Unit in the front part just because it wasn't that noticeable and i just found it to be rather firm again same thing as last year so it really depends on what you're looking for i didn't necessarily love this if you're going on a longer run but i think if you want to pick up the pace having a slightly firmer forefoot may help but it's just something to know and i think it really comes down to your personal running style and one thing i really do enjoy about the pegasus is you have full rubber coverage with a rather aggressive lug pattern that seems to work well on a wide variety of surfaces especially compared to most trainers now which you're kind of opting for a more smooth outsole so you get a bit more traction here with the pegasus which i think helps increase its versatility so at the end of the day the 39 and the 40 are very similar as they are within nike's two-year refresh window meaning the 40 is just a minor upper update you would think they'd do a bigger change for the 40th edition as that's a big anniversary year but we will have to wait for the 41 for the pegasus to be redesigned the 40 is about 7% heavier. They opted for a mid-foot cage compared to flywire cables. The tongue has a bit more padding to it, and the upper has been redesigned to be a bit more open, a bit more breathable with larger holes to it compared to the more tightly woven engineered mesh we saw here on the 39, although I thought the 39's breathability was solid. The midsole, two air zoom units, React foam, completely the same between the 39 and the 40. So if you're looking to save some money, I think the 39 makes sense. And if you're a fan of the 39, I think it's going to be a similar experience here with the 40 with just a couple minor tweaks. I don't think any of the changes in the 40 really move the needle for better or worse. Just feels kind of like some small tweaks here and there. Really did make the experience better or worse. Just feels like a solid Pegasus on whatever revision you want to call this. So at the end of the day, kind of depends on what you're looking for if you want the style of the 40 it might make sense to kind of pay a bit more or if you're just happy with your pegasus 39 you might be able to pick up these on sale well that concludes the review let me know down in the comments what you think and which shoe would you go with or are you gonna wait for the pegasus 41 when they do a complete redesign i'd love to hear from you well i'm ryan from ryan's running reviews and i'll catch you guys on the next one thanks